All right, welcome everybody to another webinar from the DeKalb County Unites team. Uh, this is our Getting Ready for Recovery series. We have webinars every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Uh, with a full boat of just educational uh, uh, webinars with uh, different industry experts and hearing firsthand from small businesses that are adjusting during these crazy times. Uh, today, we are doing our small business spotlight. Uh, I will let the panelists introduce themselves in a second, but before we get there, uh, I just wanted to explain DeKalb County Unites. DeKalb County Unites is a grassroots initiative right now in DeKalb County. It is made up of people from Northern Illinois University, the government sector, the private sector, nonprofit sector, you name it. It was just a whole bunch of people that came together instantly when the COVID-19 crisis hit and shelter in place was mandated. And we realized that there was gonna be a huge impact on the small business community. We all know the small business community is full of our friends, our neighbors and family members are employed there. They're the backbone to our economy. They're the ones that fund the events at schools, um, the nonprofit community, uh, they, are, they are the world to us. So we really wanted to make sure we did everything we could to help them through this, uh, this, this crisis that's happening right now. So DeKalb County Unites, if you go to DeKalbCountyUnites.com, you can find out more about us. There's just three major initiatives that we're a part of that we've been driving in order to make that positive impact. One of them is our website, which is full of a wealth of information, frequently asked questions from the webinars, as well as what programs are out there from the federal and state and local level that small businesses can take advantage of. So I highly recommend all you small business owners go to DeKalbCountyUnites.com. We also uh, got on the horn, uh, the DeKalb County Economic Development Corporation's Board of Directors picked up the phone and called all the major employers in our area. We had over 50 participate in a program in order to start purchasing locally and then accelerating their purchases. So a lot of these organizations had budgets, they knew what they were gonna spend over the course of the year. So we encouraged them to advance that spending and spend it now within our local economy. And over 50 participated and made a huge impact, which is fantastic. And then the last piece is this webinar series. Every Monday, we have Mark Kerman from Seaford, Frank Roberts from First National Bank. They're talking about the PPP loan and the EIDL loan. A lot of great conversations happening there. Wednesdays is uh, usually subject matter experts about something going on about the crisis that impacts small businesses from the unemployment office to the Department of Health we had last Wednesday. And then today, the Fridays, are the small business spotlight. So uh, I'd love to... Uh, uh, let each panelist introduce themselves. Uh, this is an informal webinar, so I encourage all of you, if you have a question, just move your mouse down to the bottom of your screen, click on the Q&A icon there, type it in, and then Courtney and I will do our best to get every question answered. To introduce myself, I am Cohen Barnes with Sundog IT here in DeKalb, Illinois. I am a small business owner. Uh, we have Courtney Strohacker from the DeKalb County Convention and Visitors Bureau. She's my right-hand woman through all this, um, helping these webinars go as smooth as possible. And with that, I'll let the panelists uh, introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about your business. And we'll start with Veronica. Hi, Veronica. Hi, thank you for having us. Um, so I own a little studio uh, salon in Genoa. Uh, we opened back up in 2017 and uh, it's, it was skyrocketing. Everything's been doing great. Um, we do hair, makeup, massages, you name it. Anything in the beauty realm, we can, we can cover that for you. And we're located right in the Genoa area and surrounding counties around us as well, so. Awesome. Well, thanks for yeah. uh, today, and and I know you're uh, uh, impacted greatly because uh, my understanding is you're not allowed to uh, cut hair right now, correct? Nope, nope. I am not allowed to perform my my uh, my job currently. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel for you most definitely. Um, Vicky, yeah. how about you? tell us a little about yourself and uh, kid stuff. All right. Well, I am Vicky Obermiller. I uh, own kid stuff right here in downtown Nacal. And I've been down here for working on 21 years. We'll get through this and we'll celebrate 21 years. Uh, we do maternity and kids, primarily resale. Um, within the past year, I've started expanding and I've done uh, more new kids boutique stuff. Um, so we have a small section of that and I call that my Molly and Miles section. Um, we do a lot with all incomes. We buy and sell and trade um, for the kids items and maternity. With this, obviously, we're not getting a lot of new merchandise in, but I have good, good stock still. Awesome. And uh, Carolyn, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Sure. I'm Carolyn Tobinson, um, a third generation owner of Tobinson's Ace Hardware up here in Genoa. Uh, my grandfather started in 1927 in Rockford, and we've been in Genoa since 1974. We really have a good presence with our local community. We love them, and they're very good to us. We also like to promote local businesses. Um, we have a local um, section in our store, and um, we just love what we're doing. Awesome. Well, welcome. So Veronica and Vicki, uh, you all are not allowed to have uh, people in your establishments as part of the shelter in place, as part of the mandate from uh, Governor right. Pritzker. But Carolyn, being a hardware store, you're, you're fully open and people are yes. coming in because everyone's at home, I assume, and, and has nothing to do. So they want to <laughs> plant flowers and they want to work on their house, right? It's a lot of painting going on out there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's fun today because we've got uh, fun and I'm being uber respectful of the, the situation we're all in. Um, but I love being around small business owners because I'm just blown away by that entrepreneurial spirit and the creativity. So when I use fun, I am being very appreciative of the situation mm -hmm. we're in right now. So I'm, I'm excited about today's discussion. So I figure I'd love to know from the three of you how the COVID-19 crisis has affected you because people that are watching right now and people that are going to watch this video are going to be from both camps. Either they can't service clients and they're struggling or they're an essential business and they're open and they're struggling with uh, trying to deal with uh, uh, getting PPP, PPE equipment for their, their staff, trying to uh, juggle keeping their clients and customers safe and their, their people safe. And then they're struggling also, um, we've talked a lot about it, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, with unemployment right now, uh, it's very lucrative depending on your wage, but it's very lucrative to be on unemployment. So it's, it's, we've had some struggles uh, getting people to come back to the workforce as well because of what's going on. So we all have challenges. We all are going through our own COVID-19 crisis. Um, but I would love to hear each of your stories on COVID hit and how did it impact you. And then we'll get into creative things that you're doing right now during this crisis. But um, if you could just give everyone a little idea on the impact, that would be fantastic. And I thought uh, we'll start with uh, Vicki right now. That's all right, Vicki. Okay, sure. Um... So when we started, um, actually we were doing really good. We were up all year. Like it was amazing. I was like, we are going to have our best year yet. And so excited. We were, you know, our percentages were well above what we normally are. And then it hit and it was like, okay, it was a wall. It was a wall. So because at least I was up until the point we had to close, it made March workable. So I was able to cover the expenses I needed to, um, and I really didn't come in. I really didn't put, do anything. Then that first week of April, it was like, oh, yeah, now I've got to figure out how I'm going to make this happen again. How am I going to pull off a month's worth of rent? Um, so it was, it was a challenge. Um, tried a few things, and some of them just didn't work out well. Uh, live and learn. So like everything we do, being a small business owner. I imagine anxiety uh, went up. Oh, um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, what's that phrase? The fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? I mean, yes, geez, absolutely. All the unknowns, and heck, yeah. we're still dealing with a bunch of unknowns because yeah. you don't know when you are going to open up. Um, is Correct. Right now, based off of Pritzker's five phase plan. So, right, um, exactly. Day by and day. people's money only lasts so long, whether they are working full time and, and from home or if they are on unemployment and getting their budget, prices of food are going up. So it's like, okay, everything is being more monitored. Yeah. I would imagine though, with all the people with little kids out there that, um, yes, got to be somewhat top of mind. I mean, <laughs> kids are still growing. They need new exactly. clothes. They need toys. Change to with these this did come in. I'm our, one of them too. Our, yeah. our, our flip is like, Oh, we're going to need shorts. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Right. yeah. It, that is that has been a big thing. It's like, oh, well, what sort of stuff do you have left? Hmm. All the big outside, because you can't go to a park, all the big or outside stuff is gone because that was, it's a need that the kids need something to do. Yep. How about uh, you, Veronica? Tell me about uh, um, before and once it hit. Uh, before, I mean, just even this year, I mean, I, I had, I have a nine-month-old now. Uh, I had come back to work. 
uh, everyone was excited, you know, like business was building up almost to the point where I needed another stylist in our salon. And I was looking for more people. I was looking for an esthetician. Like I was looking for more people, you know, to come in. And unfortunately this completely just put everything at a standstill. I mean, completely. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was pretty, I mean, I'm, I'm a dramatic person, but I mean, it was dramatic. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it just completely stopped us uh, in our tracks, you know, because we were going up this hill of revenue and people, new people coming in and I was doing a lot of advertisement and, you know, new signage and everything. And, and all of a sudden it just, you know, the, you know, middle of March, it just stopped. So, um, yeah, ever since that, I mean, when that happened, it was a lot, it was a lot to take in, you know, it was a lot to take in. Um, you know, I have another uh, independent contractor who's another stylist inside of our salon as well. And that's impacted her as well, as, as well as me, you know, as well as my sister who also works there as a massage therapist. It's, it's impacted us tremendously, you know, and also too, on top of that, you know, I'm extremely close with my clients and it's sad because I miss them, Courtney. I miss, you know, I miss, I miss, I miss that interaction. I miss my uh, routine. Um, you know, I mean, everything about it, it's just, just the forcing to close is just, you know, it's been, it's been a halt, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine, you know, turning that lock and not knowing. Just closing the door. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Carolyn, you're the you're the other side of it. Um, yep. So this is a hardware store, like we said, everyone's coming to you. So mm -hmm. pre-COVID and now COVID, uh, what have things been like for you? Pre-COVID, we were just getting ready to gear up for spring, uh, you know, hoping that the weather was going to turn for us and start getting busier, stocking the spring supplies. And then when everything hit, um, it was... I everybody got scared and half of my employees got scared and I have employees that are um, they they shouldn't be working in this environment so it was okay if you need to not work then don't work and don't come in and all of a sudden we found ourselves at half staff but people just kept coming in and customers were just unbelievable and and April, we just started going gangbusters and we had to get some kind of help because the only thing we could do was wait on customers and try and put the stock away, which that's, our trucks are double the size right now. But um, it's, it's a good, it's a good problem to have. I'm very, very fortunate. Um, we have, a, like I said, wonderful community, great customers, and you could tell that people just wanted to get out of the house. And they wanted to come, and I see some people almost every day. But it started out where families would come in in the first weeks of April, and then they started realizing, well, we can't do this anymore. We have to have a limit on the number of people coming in the store. And people are good about that now. Maybe uh, a couple might come in, but most of the time people come in by themselves, and we don't see a lot of children. But um, they're, they've got lots of projects to do, and they're getting, a lot of people are very happy. They're getting all their honeydew lists done. So um, it's good that we can be there for that. Yeah. I heard someone say that uh, this spring, everyone's yards are going to look amazing. <laughs> I think so. Because <laughs> everyone's got the time to do it. Um, yep. uh, so I, I guess uh, I'd like to simultaneously just maybe we'll go backwards through it, but I'd love to hear... Um, what you've done that might be, we'll call it unique, or, or maybe you don't think it's unique, but share with us just something, one or two things that you might have done differently now that you're in it uh, compared to uh, how you were operating before. And, and I know like for Vicki and Veronica, I mean, that, that, mm -hmm. that's a whole other challenge. So it may not be right. generating revenue because Veronica, you, you can't and bring people in and, and cut hair and, and do all the stuff that you do. And I'm a guy, right? So I'm just thinking cutting hair. I know you do a whole variety of services, but bear <laughs> with me. Um, but uh, I'm, also, I'm also curious if you have any comments on how you have tried to stay top of mind with your clients. So when shelter in place ends, right? Um, how am I gonna remember that I wanna go to studio uh, 815? 
uh, for my haircut as opposed to uh, some other place. So if you all could share just tips, tricks that you've done uh, that you think have made you successful right now, as well as might make you successful in the future, that would be phenomenal. And Caroline, I'll just start with you. I'll go backwards okay. through the list. That's right. Um, we, we are focusing on keeping the interaction with our customers, um, first name basis. Uh, we're getting so much more online ordering, curbside pickup, but still keeping our presence and bending over backwards to do whatever we can because that's absolutely a fear. What's going to happen when all of this ends and where will my customers be going? We want them to come back and keep shopping with us because I see a lot of new faces too. Um, so we're just trying to do that. We're, we're very blessed that ACE has been very, very good to all of us retailers. They've tackled it um, with a lot of signage. They are promoting everything online. Um, they give, they provide us, they're bending over backwards to find any avenue they can to get us PPE for our employees, our staff. And um, so I'm, I've got that in my corner. I'm very lucky to have that. That's awesome. Nice. How about you, Vicki? What, what have you done? What have I done? Well, I tried making a web store and I have decided that that was unsuccessful in the way that I was using it. Um, I couldn't get people to go to the website. I still have only had minimal visitors. So that in and of itself is its own issue and I will continue working on that a little bit. But given that I have probably millions of pieces in my store, it's going to take a long time to uh, get that loaded up correctly, I guess, in a more effective way. So I kind of scrapped the idea and uh, have gone to what can I do visually? Um, so I just put it out there that I would do video calls and we could video shop kind of like this Zoom meeting. Um, so you can call me, we'll walk through the store together kind of a thing and you still kind of get the, the in-person feel, but it's not, not exactly the same. Um, the other idea that I have been, uh, very successful with is actually we did a, um, a fellow business owner goes, let's fill your window with a whole bunch of stuff. And I said, okay. So then we made a game out of it and we'll do like a, an I spy game. Cause you know, I'm a kid's store. So you, when you cram so much stuff in there, you kind of have to stop and look. And I took some really good pictures and posted those. We had lots of good interaction off of that. And so I think that that's something that most businesses can do. I love that idea because my kids are 19 and 17 now. So, but I remember <laughs> the I spy books and oh my God, right. we would, we would spend hours just trying to find everything on that. So that's right. really cool of a way to get your, your customers engaged um, right. on an activity that they're used to doing with their kids anyway, but it's right. familiar with so for itself. Exactly. Like if they happen to be out for a walk and are downtown, then they can peek in the windows and do it or they can do it virtually online. Yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit about the, the, the virtual shopping. So like if I had a, a six-year-old boy, I could be like, hey, Vicky, right. I got a six-year-old boy. Um, okay. I'm curious about clothes, toys, and how, how yeah. would I get a hold of you? Um, basically, all you do is you can uh, give me a call on the store phone, um, which is 815-787-7683. Or I've been giving out my personal cell phone because it's easier to do it on my cell phone, obviously. Um, if they call me through the store, then I just call them back on my cell phone so it does make it pretty easy um to do it that way because then you can you do that i've been using duo as a it's through google and oh, yeah. it just happened to already be on my um, phone so wait what is duo do? google duo it is a video phone call and it doesn't seem to have the a little bit of a lag like i don't know i have a galaxy so some of the other video call options aren't as effective mm -hmm. yeah so this one tends to work pretty good. And it's easy for people on the other end to get hooked up. Yeah. And use it. Right. Because even if they have iPhones or, or something like, you know, another brand, um, because it's Google, you can get it easily through the app stores. Fascinating. So in thinking of Carolyn on this, you know, the, the whole, the, this, uh, so I'm in technology and seeing everyone that used to be like, I'm not going to go on Facebook or I'm not going to do a video call or, you know, get off yeah, my that lawn, that, that whole generation, right? <laughs> um, uh, that, that generation goes from 20 year olds to 80 year olds. I mean, it, it's not an age <laughs> thing, but to see everyone transition so almost instantly to adopting technology and being comfortable with it because now they're incentivized. They, they, they need that. 
I mean, I could see like, and I was thinking as Vicky was talking, Carolyn, that, and who knows, but in the future, you can almost see, uh, I've called uh, hardware stores before and said, hey, do you have X, Y, or Z? And then mm -hmm. someone runs and checks in the aisle. Well, how cool would it be if they're walking me down the aisle and, and showing me? I'm already writing this one. down. I love Vicky's idea. That's yeah, amazing. Because yeah. <laughs> we get that a lot. Not just for right yeah. now. This is this is future, right? Uh, how can right. we capitalize on, on people's uh, acceptance of technology now? to when it's normal where they could come to your store, but you know what, maybe, hey, I'm just gonna call Carolyn and say, can you show me what drill bits you have and I wanna see if you've got an X <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, that could be really hope cool. they get that extra bit, you know, like you used to have add-ons on your register and be like, oh, well, I could use that extra tape measure because mine isn't working right. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. as you're walking by, they may not have thought that they needed that. Yeah, that's awesome. How about uh, uh, you, Veronica? So tell us about anything you've done to either uh, generate revenue right now or try and stay top of mind with your customers? Absolutely. Um, so when I had first found out that we were closing, <clears throat> uh, I was trying to make videos, trying to make videos to see what clients wanted, what they're engaged in, what, you know, what I, what I can do from home to help them, whether that was, uh, you know, if they're growing their, if they can't cut their own bangs, you know, how can you wear your bangs? Mm -hmm. um, I was suggesting video calls. They can, you know, anyone can Skype me or, you know, Zoom me. Um, but it started that way. And then eventually, once I knew that we were progressively going to be closed even longer, um, it's not, for a hairstylist point of view, it's not typical to uh, make color kits or you know, deliver products to people's front doorsteps. But in the situation that we're in, there's certain circumstances, and I think that's where I kind of flipped. You know, I decided that I was going to, um, you know, I have clients that needed their roots touched up. I know their formula. I know exactly what goes on their head. Um, so I actually started sending at-home kits to my clients that needed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, uh, people, you know, people, regardless if they're with me or not, my top priority is my clients. I care about them. I love them. I miss them. So I think um, whether they're home or whether they are still working and they are considered essential employees, they want to feel good about themselves. And I still wanted to provide that service for them. So that's why I decided I was going to make kits that people at home can actually apply the professional color that I use on them with very, de you know, very descriptive instructions so that we can actually allow my clients to touch up their color at home, so to speak. And um, just to get us through, you know, and that's kind of helped with some revenue, nothing crazy, but it's enough I'm more, like I said, more so I'm concerned about my clients. I want to keep my clients, you know, I want to be able to help them as much as possible. Um, also too, uh, delivering products, professional products, um, I'm able to get them shipped directly to my house and then I can do, uh, ports drop-offs, which is what I've been doing as well. And that's, and that's helped too as well. Obviously, you know, I can't be teaching people, you know, I can't teach your wife how to cut your hair right now, but you know, that'll be, <laughs> hopefully that's not the next step that we have to take. My daughter is actually the one cutting my hair right now. <laughs> Yeah, the, I love the, the color kits. I mean, I was blonde before COVID-19 hit, and now look at me, you know? <laughs> oh, my fault. Well, you, no, that, yeah, that, send me that, some of your address, and I can send you one right over. You just let me know. <laughs> that is, that's genius, though. Uh, uh, if you think, and, and I know you thought about it, but, but here, just me hearing it, right? So you have customers that, obviously, everyone's hair is different, and everyone has their own style. You knew their mm -hmm. color. So to be able to put a color kit uh, together, to be able to get it for the, the roots to get done and stuff. Uh, my, uh, I better not tell too personal because people can connect dots, but I know people <laughs> that go to salons <laughs> have this exact issue that yes. are not getting that, that service. Um, and that is awesome because every customer that you've done that for, if I had to guess, has someone, a friend that probably went, oh my God, I, I, I wish I would have had that. Um, and now, you know, Studio 815 is, is, is going to be top of mind, not only for your customers to take care of them that way. It's staggeringly awesome. 
but also just other people are going to know you now because of, of the personal care that you've given, which that, that to me, that, that, that's, that's entrepreneurialism, right? That's see a need, fill a need. Um, so crushing it from that perspective. That, that's you know, just, I'm going to yeah. butt, butt in for a second yeah. because Ronnie said she just did kits and dropped them off, but she went way over that. And we saw in some of the other webinars that we've done already, especially with like Brian and he was saying, oh, uh, sorry, OC marketing, um, with really making things personal and really uh, putting that that touch with your customers. Um, she wrote, Ronnie, well, I'll divulge my information. And yes, I was one of those customers that did purchase one of those kits because I called her and I was like, oh my God, I look like a skunk. You have to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Cohen's making me do these webinars and I look like a skunk. <laughs> So she was like, don't go and just buy anything. I will take care of you. She gave me a step-by-step -step instructions on what to do and then wrote like a sweet little note at the bottom that was like, you're beautiful. I miss your smile. I can't wait to see you. So not only did she do, you know, curbside or door-to-door -door delivery, she actually delivered it to my house, but she really took that extra step to write a personal note, to personalize every little kit. So people remember that. I mean, I'm going to remember that. I love, you know, her service before that, but for sure now after that, and you betcha, I put it out on Facebook and took pictures and told everyone that's on my page about my experience. So it's, you know, a brilliant way to market, a brilliant way to make your customers feel special. So kudos, but I, you know, going back, Ronnie, um, when this all started, I think it's important. You weren't even, uh, doing credit cards at the time. No, cash or check. Yeah, when I mean, yeah. I think you've your salon has completely changed in the last two months. To now, you can do payment on you know over your phone, online. You didn't have the getting gift certificates online. We were able to do that. Um, yeah. So really pivoted and modified a lot to crush it during COVID. Right. Yeah, we're doing. You know, we're trying. I'm trying to think as many things of options for people. So giving them discounts on uh, gift certificates if they purchase them now you know, you get a discounted price for when you do decide to come in, you know what I mean? So such as those things, you know, we're, I'm trying to think of ways to help, help our business, but also help my clients as well. Yeah. And Carolyn and Vicki, I, I've got, mm -hmm. I've got more questions, but feel free if there's ever yep. anything we're talking about and you want to chime in, raise your hand and I'll make sure to call on you. Um, but that, that's a good point. We've got a question from uh, uh, the audience on, can you all talk about programs, resources, or tools that have been helpful uh, during this time? So that was a great example, cash and check, and now you're processing credit cards. Um, but how about uh, you, Vicki? Is, is there anything different? Like you mentioned trying to go to the store and it didn't work out. Um, you right. did talk about doing Duo, which is, that, that's really cool because I know Duo from an IT security standpoint on multi-factor authentication. I had no idea that they offered uh, video conferencing as well or video chat. Yeah. Um, tools that you might have might have utilized during this time. Um, really, that was my biggest one that I have totally um, used. Um, I use Square for my credit card processing, and so that's where I was starting up that uh, web store. Oh um, uh, yeah, yeah. We've heard about that Square store, right? Yes, yeah. and I think it's more my user error versus the platform. So I've had other people say that they're doing really well with it. So. And we know Bill from the Lincoln Inn, uh, when he heard, I can't remember, I think it was Brian from OC Creates that brought up the Square Store, mm -hmm. he instantly adopted it. Now, he doesn't have thousands of items, right? He has right. a menu and right. he can put on a certain menu, right. so it was a little right. easier for him. Yeah. He started utilizing that to uh, instantly right. start generating revenue for his organization. Which is great. Yeah. 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 How about you, Carolyn? Any, anything changed from a technology perspective uh, during this time? Yeah, Ace finally got their app figured out, and it launched right at the same time that this all happened. So it is a great online tool, um, and it makes our job so much easier. And my cashier, said, my main cashier that's been with me every day, um, she has more fun showing people how to set up the app on their phone. And they can see their ACE rewards points, they can shop, they can do all this stuff. We've got, it, it just is such a great thing to have. And we have our re retailer app that 
anybody that orders anything online, it comes to me instantly. We can do deliveries with it. They can sign right on the phone. We don't have to have any contact with anybody if they don't want to. It's, it's, that's just been really fun to get to learn how, how to use it all. And on the app, then they can they can select curbside, or or how does that yes. work? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, so your customers have the option just to order online and pull right up and have you bring yep. this stuff out. That's pretty. They cool. do, and they call, and then some people just call and they they want to order, they want to shop on the phone. So we do. We we have cordless phones. We walk around the store and we shop for them, and then bag it all up and take it out to their car. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And that that's what I'm saying. I, I, who knows what this looks like afterwards, right? But there is opportunity here that, you know, grocery stores, even before COVID-19 started doing uh, home delivery, um, who knows where our businesses are going to be after this. But the fact that people have adopted technology so quickly, I think it's going to open a lot of doors for us. Mm -hmm. um, it just sucks we had to learn it this way. Right. <laughs> it is what it is. In such a rush. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, unknown fact, maybe, for some people, for Ace, though, when I was at the Genoa Chamber, we ordered all of our paper supplies from Tobinson's. Um, it's not just, you know, household yard things. Um, Carolyn, maybe you want to talk, I mean, you can get paper towels. We did reams of paper, boxes of paper, mm -hmm. and you were doing Cleaning that. supplies even. I, I purchased yes. cleaning supplies from there as well. Yeah. Yes, our business to business program keeps growing and um, it's something that ACE encourages and it's it is huge for us because there's all businesses need cleaning supplies, they need paper supplies, and it's something that's very easy for us to get commercial paper and all the supplies. So that's something that we've been trying to promote and uh, it's it's growing. So the, a question for all of you came in. Um, what have you been doing to partner with other local businesses or have you started any partnerships now that you weren't doing before? And maybe, uh, Carolyn, you can talk about the Genoa stimulus package too, but I think I'll let, have Vicki start. Any partner? Um, <laughs> I uh, run the downtown monitor, the downtown DeKalb page. So I partnership with pretty much everybody that's down here. Um, I try to share all their infos and promos that they do um, as I see them. I miss some, I'm obviously, because I'm not on my phone all the time, but I try to try to find everybody's and uh, get them shared that way. Um, I know I've helped out um, and they've helped me a lot, uh, Found Home and Vintage, um, Leslie and uh, Janet Blue Door Decor. Um, we kind of can cover each other's shops. We have some keys. It's like, okay, if I can't um, make a pickup time that, you know, somebody else can run in and make sure it's available for them. Just, you know, set the bag outside or whatever needs to happen. Great. How about Veronica or Carolyn, uh, working with uh, other businesses in, in partnership? Well, we do, um, we're the local um, hub drop-off spot for a lot of at-home businesses. They've done a weekly um, shop, if you will, and then they can buy from different vendors through this hub. And then on Thursdays, all that um, comes to Ace and then their customers can pick that up. We partner with any local um, vendor at home. We, got, we have local honey, we have local candles. Um, these people can't do craft shows right now or markets. And so they actually can't put their products anywhere. So I encourage them, come into the store. Um, we just keep track of the sales. We take a tiny percentage off of their products, way less than what I would do for normal products because I, I think it's important for them to make their money too. Um, and so we've done that. And then we did a stimulus package in Genoa too, where nine different businesses um, got together and we did $10 gift certificates in this package. And then the packages were sold online. And I think the first go around, it was over 22 packages. And then we've done another eight or 10 packages in this go around. So it's helping um, a lot of the businesses that are closed right now. That's awesome. Okay. Are you, Veronica, any tag teaming with another business at all? Or? Um, yeah, I actually, uh, I befriended Scott from the barber shop in town in Genoa. Hi, Scott, if you're watching. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, him and I have kind of tag teamed as far as, you know, different ideas. I also know a couple different local stylists as well. Um, just to kind of gather ideas of like, you know, how, 
how we're going to deal with COVID and, and, and how we're going to deal with reopening after all this is done. Um, there's different certificates, you know, like Scott had sent me a link uh, about barbicide, you know, you can get uh, certified, which I plan on doing getting bar, you know, for COVID-19 specifically, you can get um, a certification through barbicide, which is all the state, you know, has to do with all the different safety issues dealing with COVID. So when you, we do decide to reopen, we know the safety precautions to take, you know. Um, I mean, but as far as like what we can and cannot do right now, I mean, that's limited to us just because we cannot provide our service, like our services ourselves. So right now it's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of, you know, I'm trying to work with other businesses, just like Carolyn had said as well. Um, I've talked to other local companies, local businesses in Genoa that sell candles, that sell other things. And I'm happy to retail them at my stores as well, just to help promote the small businesses in town. Awesome. Yeah, we, yeah. Had, uh, we had uh, Byers Brewing and the Ford's Brew House and John and Mac Orchard on a uh, previous uh, small business spotlight on Friday. And they formed a DeKalb County Craft Brewers Alliance where they're delivering each other's beer. So same kind of thing, Veronica, where it's like mm -hmm. people can't come in and, and sit down and, and buy a bunch of beer. Um, but they thought, wouldn't it be cool to do home delivery? And why don't the three of us just team up? And, and it has been incredibly impactful for them. So highly encourage those listening and the three of you even just keep thinking about those ways to, to work together with other businesses. Uh, and you're probably going to find even more ways to generate revenue. But at a minimum, it's just all of us sticking together and trying to help each other out, which is, which right. is so important. Um, Veronica, you had a great segue when you started talking about PPE. I'm curious about uh, um, what do you... What are you all thinking uh, it might look like in your individual businesses or what are you going to do that you already know maybe uh, as far as making your customers feel safe and your staff feel safe uh, once you start bringing uh, customers back in your business or in your case Carolyn uh, what is the what does the future look like um, and I think I'll just start with Veronica you know and mm -hmm. when phase three hits I think that's when people can come to your salon um, what, what what does yes. that look like um, well, I've also looked at other forums in other states that are open, like Georgia. They're currently open. Um, I've, I've seen um, on Facebook. Facebook's been a great uh, medium for me to look for different, different businesses doing hair, um, what they're doing for PPE. Uh, you know, they're doing disposable aprons, disposable um, capes, you know, masks are, you know, and it is going to change it is going to change pretty drastically from when we were open. It is going to require appointments only, you know, no walk-ins. Before you come in, you must sanitize your hands. You have to have a mask, whether we provide that or they provide that for themselves. Um, you know, it's going to cut our, it's going to cut our revenue and our, the amount of clients that we have, it's going to cut them down to about half at least because we have to have that time to prep in between clients for proper sterilization. Because we want to make sure that our clients feel safe, most, you know, foremost than anything. We want to make sure our clients feel safe. Um, and that's keeping us safe, keeping them safe. No, you know, tr no transmitting between me and a client to another client. So it's going to require a lot of PPE. It's going to require us wearing masks, us changing our masks. Like I said, the aprons, disposable aprons, um, you know, even whether that's face shields to help face shields for clients when they're getting their shampoos done. Um, so a lot is going to change when we first open, but it's more so, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the bare essentials to help people get through, you know, whether that's you coming in, Cohen, to get your hair cut, you know, it's the bare essentials just to come and get what you need to done and make sure that you're happy when you leave and make sure that you're safe when you leave more than anything, you know, because, um, it's just, yeah, it's a lot of prep. It's a lot of preparation, you know, but uh, what, went, what matters most to us is keeping the clients safe and keeping them happy. That's, that's my main number one goal for when we, do, when we are reopened. And it's going to be tough because there's people out there with a whole wide variety of philosophies on this thing, even yes. internally, um, you mm -hmm. know, my marketing intern wanted to show me something and he came and he like, we were shoulder to shoulder and I'm like, dude, Come on, man. You know, come on. We, we got to have some distancing here. Or I went to see uh, my doctor yesterday and he walked in the room, no mask and shook my hand. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to yeah, be fine. And, you know, 
but for our, you know, for our job, I am touching people's faces. I am within mm -hmm. inches of your face. So it's, it's, it's very, you know, it's, I mean, even when I received my license, the, you know, when you, when you receive your license for this, I mean, you have to know so much about sanitation just to begin with before even the COVID, you know what I mean? So we had to know so much about sanitation. And on top of that, we're also doing other, we're also doing other protocols that we will, you know, that we will ensure that are going to happen for when we reopen, you know, like I said, gloves all the time, you know, cause when I would do, you know, waxes and, and things such as that, you know, I, I would wash my hands in between each client like I normally do, but I wouldn't have to wear gloves. But now, you know, I have to wear latex gloves in between each client, whether, you know, I'm touching their face or not. Do you know what I mean? So there's just going to be a, there's going to be a lot of precautions and hospital grade, you know, sanitizers and disinfectants that we are going to have into place to make sure that our clients feel safe and that we are safe as well. How about you, Carolyn? I mean, you're, you're in it right now, so you're mm -hmm. dealing with PPE and all that, but what, what do you, what do you see things looking like? Um, you know, once, uh, the phases go through and more and more people are coming out and interacting, what, what's going to be the new, uh, new normal, uh, for ACE hardware, uh, for you? Well, I think masks are, are here to stay. Yeah. I think that that's going to be a permanent thing. Um, the social distancing, we wipe down counters, uh, pin pads for the debit cards, for the sh shopping cards. We're constantly wiping things down. Um, and that's, that's about all we can do right now because we don't know what's coming into the store and I want my staff to stay safe. Mm -hmm. um, and we want our customers to stay safe and feel safe in the store. So it's a constant wiping down and um, keeping things clean. I think I know the root of this question, but it was directed towards you. Is ACE having any challenges related to wearing masks? Uh, challenges from consumers? I, I think, well, it could be. Uh, I'm thinking, like, I wear glasses, and wearing a mask with glasses is a challenge because they're it always is. fogging up on me. I'm adjusting. But but any anything you can share on, on just issues you've had with, with PPE? We've had, we have the occasional customer that comes in and says that they don't believe in the masks and they're not going to wear the mask. And I say, well, unfortunately, I, I understand your views and value that, but uh, here's a paper towel. You got to have a face covering on just to shop. And um, if, if you don't want to, we'll come outside and take care. We've done a few transactions outside the front door. Um, but majority of everybody is good about that. Um, I've seen so many different styles of face masks and face coverings out there. It's, it's hilarious. I really love the ones that have the big mouth on the front of them. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a whole designer line, you know, Gucci's going to have face masks. Yeah. I already do. <laughs> you know? yeah. How about you, Vicki? What, what, uh, going in the kids stuff, uh, once uh, you can open your doors, what, what's that going to look like for you? It's going to be different from what everybody's used to. Um, pre all of this, the kids, I encourage parents to bring their kids to come and hang out and play and, and really just kind of just have a good time with the toys and stuff. Uh, that's going to unfortunately have to stop. So um, it may even come to the point that the really small kids, maybe I'll have to, if you could bring them in a stroller, make that kind of a recommendation. Um, but I will have um, wipes and hand sanitizer and those things available. Um, great. And when the days are beautiful, I'll keep the door propped open so nobody has to touch the door. Um, as far as, you know, touching other merchandise, I will do my best to try to help them and show them um, things so that that way they don't feel like they have to touch things to experience what everything does. Um, I've also contemplated showing, um, doing more of a, like a show and tell. It's like, oh, you want to look at 18 months? Sure. Let me just lay these all out here for you to look at them instead of if they're uneasy with, you know, going through and touching the hangers. So cool those are things I thought about. Yeah. The so, cool thing about all this is, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, we're, we're, we're all going to have to adjust, right? But right. What I'll tell you firsthand what I've been learning through all this as part of the California <laughs> Unites is there's a lot of small businesses that aren't, aren't adjusting at all. Um, so yeah. hopefully these are going to help educate a lot of those to help them through this time and, and during the recovery. 
Um, but I, I got to give a lot of kudos to the three of you because you will be here in the recovery, right? Um, and and that, that just, that's just awesome that you have that, that foresight to start looking past the immediate and how can I stay relevant? How can I generate? How can I be here? Um, right. so that's, just, that's just awesome. And I applaud you for that. Uh, Courtney, any, any final questions, final thoughts? Um, so I just, Carolyn, have seen some really great things that you've been doing to keep up your employee morale. Do you want to talk a little bit about just how you've been able to, it's hard, you know, I mean, I think yeah. Cohen has said several times, we all have our own COVID story right now, and we're all dealing with it professionally and personally. And so um, I just, I've, you know, seen some of your social media things that you've done and your uh, kindness is contagious through the Genoa Chamber. Um, you want to talk about some of the things that you're doing quick? Like slipping them a $50 bill periodically. <laughs> Money talks. Uh, we buy lunch. Uh, we, um, Sunday is our short day, so it's only six hours. There's no way I can get lunch breaks and do split shifts. So we just order off the Subway app, and I go and pick it up, and we just have sandwiches all over the break room. Um, socially distant, of course. And we, um, I just go and buy donuts occasionally. I try to just, um, I, all the certificates that were in the stimulus package are going out to my employees, just finding them. I go down to Pete's Castle and get the ice cream gift certificates because the kids all love their ice cream. Um, just trying to keep everything, let them know I, I really appreciate that they are here because it's their choice. They don't have to work right now, but I appreciate that they do stick with me. It's awesome. Yeah. All right, we're uh, we're time to wrap up. Uh, God, I appreciate uh, the time you all have spent with us today. Uh, I did want to call out a few things before everyone hops off this webinar. Uh, next week we've got webinars every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at two p.m. Uh, don't forget this Monday we'll have Frank and Mark and Jock on to talk about the PPP and EIDL loans, as well as any other questions around any other federal or state uh, stimulus. Uh, packages these guys have the answers but the discussion on ppp and forgiveness has been fascinating lately so I highly recommend you register and tune in on monday uh, wednesday we've got dr jock Somiz and uh, uh, calvin giles from the illinois Depart department of employment security on um, and they're going to be talking about unemployment and unemployment goes into the, the the sole proprietor and what does that look like as well as information you communicate to your staff and us as employers want to know uh, what our obligations are, uh, what penalties we might have for it. And we're actually with, with Calvin Giles on, he is with the IDS and IDES and has a wealth of information because right now, if you try and get a hold of that department, good luck. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So uh, we're blessed to have him on during this time. And then next Friday is our small business spotlight again. We've got uh, Lizzie's Pink Boutique on. We've got John Bachman on from Bachman's Auto Care. And then Maria Pena Graham on uh, from Caldwell Banker Real Estate Group uh, to do just this, to share uh, tips and tricks that they've got. So I'd encourage the three of you to attend. I'd encourage everyone that's on the webinar right now to attend and listening because uh, that's going to be another great one. So Thank you again to uh, Veronica and Vicki and you. Carolyn. Uh, you guys were absolutely Thank amazing. You. Keep doing what Thank you're you so doing. much. I look yes. forward to seeing you all on the other side. And thanks, Courtney, for uh, assisting me during the webinar again. And I just wish everyone stay safe and have a wonderful week. And uh, Happy Mother's Day to all those moms out there. <laughs> happy yeah, Mother's happy Mother's Day. Day. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.